talk about what emotions you had, what feelings you had when you first hear about the next your next opponent in Alante Green, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, motionless. It's just another fight. Well, this fight's going to have some ramifications or there'll be things announced with titles and everything. Uh, so it is going to be a pretty big fight. You guys are both uh, ranked by the WBC. You being 7, him being 18. So this is a top 20 fight of the best cruiserweights. Never really happens in Canada, but this is nothing for you because you've been main eventing forever. What challenges do you see in this fight? Every challenge. Listen, it's a... Like, I, like you just said, I'm fighting the top 20. So, you know, once you get into that top 20, anybody can win on any given night. You're, you're talking 50-50 fights. Number 18 could fight the number six. The number one could fight the number seven. The number seven could fight number 12. It doesn't matter. Once you are a top 20, you are an elite fighter. So an elite fighter is an elite fighter. You can, you could, I could fight this guy 10 times. You're gonna have 10 different fights on 10 different nights. They're 50-50 fights, anything can happen. You know, we're both going to come ready, both going to come with game plans, conditioned. We can both punch, we can both take a punch. You know, we're both at that level where even, even the loser is still world class, you know? It's a, it's, it's a serious fight. This is what we call lean boxing in Canada, which is not something we get all the time. Uh, and we're gifted to have this in Ontario and in Hamilton and to watch you fight again. Uh, I hope people can truly appreciate how far you've gone in your career and how you're still fighting uh, for the Canadian fans. I also would like to add in that he wanted this fight. Most people take the fight with you because they were offered money. He wanted to fight you. He reached out to fight you. How does that make you feel? Hey, it's like I said, uh, once you crack that top 20, we're all in the same we're all in the same boat here, you know, we're all looking for, uh, for legacies, we're all looking for titles. This guy's already a champion, he's a North American champion, so, you know, this is, this is going to be my first time actually being a challenger for somebody's belt. Um, I've only, if you look at my record, I've only fought for vacated belts. So this is the first time I'm actually facing a champion, a legitimate champion who won his title against, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the guy he beat was undefeated, knocked him out cold for the, for the belt that, he, that I'm challenging him for. So this is, um, you know, this is a championship fight, and, and uh, hey, shout out to the boys, Three Lions Promotions, because they're doing something that, you know, it's uh, it needs to be appreciated a little more. Like the fights that they're putting on in Canada, these are these are world class fights. This is probably a side, like this honestly is probably even a little bit bigger of a fight than against Peralta. You know, that was a, that was two world class, two elite cruiserweights fighting. This is again two elite cruiserweights fighting. So shout out to them for, for really uh, going out of their way to, to give Canada, you know, the fights that we deserve, the, the fights that the, the fans want. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it needs to be appreciated. Do you feel like this fight's gonna be a stepping stone fight and where do you see it going after or are you just focused on what is in front of you? Um, I honestly, to, personally, I don't, I don't use that stepping stone fight term because every single fight, you, once you listen, once you get to 200 pounds, every fight is dangerous. I could fight a guy you never heard of and that, that guy could possibly be one of the toughest men in the world. You know, he might hit so hard you can't, nothing you can do. Like it, these, these fights are all just, they're just tough fights. Some of them are non-title fights, some of them are title fights. You know, to me, I'm just a prize fighter. I'm a, I'm, I'm a pugilist, you know? I'm just here to fight. I'm just here to fight and, uh, you know, represent myself, make some money, and get the fuck out of this game before I end up brain damage. Please don't say that. Um, what holes do you see in, in this game and what tape have you seen in it? Uh, if I'm being totally honest, I'm, uh, I'm not watching this guy. I'm going to leave that up to Stevie. Um, sometimes when I watch opponents, I might... I'm not, I'm not a coach. See, I'm, I, I have a great boxing mind when it comes to watching and studying old school films, but, like, this, this, is, not, this is not what I do. I don't, I don't make gay plans. I don't look for holes in there. I leave, that's, that's what Stevie does. That's his profession, and then he 
trains me to fight whatever style we're going up against. So, you know, we're at the stage now, I'm 19 pro fights in. We've had multiple championship fights. We had a world title fight. You know, we've been there, done that. So it's like, it's just at, the, it's at that stage now where I got full trust in him. He, he, he tells me what to do and I'm gonna do it. You know, and it's up to me to make sure that I go in there with no emotions. You know, there's ice in my veins and I'm just looking to, to do what he tells me to do. And we're also on the same page where we both want to hurt the man. We're not in there to box. We're not in there to, um, you know, uh, showcase these perfect skills. No, no, we're there to break bones, do damage, knock this guy out, stop him, knock him out, hurt him, kill him before he kills me. What do you feel when you go into a fight? What, like, what, what do you feel? I feel nothing. I, I feel... Um, I feel all my feelings usually about two weeks before the fight. I get emotional, I start thinking the worst. Um, I go through all my stress, but once fight week comes, I'm, I don't feel anything. You know, I think there might be, there's something in my brain that just like when I, when um, the, the closer the fight gets, like it's almost like I'm, I'm not even, not even here. I'm just kind of, you know, along for the ride. All I, all I think about is killing the man before he kills me. What separates you guys as athletes and boxers? I'm not a boxer. I'm a fighter who boxes. I'm a, I'm a gladiator that just so happened to get court ordered to join a sport and my dad picked boxing. I'm not a boxer. If, if it wasn't for the way my life went and the, you know, this is the, the sport that I got, you know, told that I had to do to stay out of trouble, I would have been off doing guy I would have been who knows what I would have been you know but it wouldn't have been good I can tell you that so I don't I don't consider myself a boxer I I practice the craft I uh, I love the the sweet science I love studying boxing and you know and working on the moves and the jab and the slips and the rolls and the counters like I love all that stuff but I'm not a boxer I'm a I'm a killer and Um, how do you see, so, how do you see this fight going in Hamilton, stylistically? Um, honestly, I don't know his style. Like, I faced all styles at this stage. Like, I fought probably the best mover in the cruiserweight division. I fought one of the hardest punchers in the last 10 years in boxing. I fought tanks, I fought runners. You know, I fought, I fought them all. So whatever he does, whatever he brings, it doesn't matter. Because I'm, I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to walk forward. I'm going to hit him harder than he's ever been hit. And he's going to break his hands off my head. What do you think your, your opponents feel when they first have an initial crack from you? Like, like, what do you see in their eyes when you first... Well, I, I can't tell you what they're feeling because I'm not them, but I can say that every single man I've ever faced, sparring, fights, as soon as I touch them, something changes. I can hit them in the arm and I can see it. Like It's like um, I look across the ring and I see, I see, like I look, I look them right in the eyes and I can see, you know, it's a, it's a hungry lion in there. It's, a, it's an animal that wants, can't wait to get his hands on me and he's, I can, I can see it in his eyes, but then as soon as I land, whether it's a punch to the arm, whether he blocks the punch, whatever, I can just see it's almost like instant, not, not fear, sometimes fear, but it's more like, well, what the fuck was that, you know? And like, I can just tell that's what they're thinking. What the fuck, what am I supposed to do now? Like, and then I can see the panic set in. You know, and people talk about sometimes my opponents, like for example, Revis, they said he was tired. He wasn't tired, it was, it was the punch power. It was the short punches inside that I broke him down. He didn't gas out, I gassed him out with the power, you know, and other opponents as well. Like, and then the, the mental fatigue kicks in when they start realizing like, my power's not going anywhere. They're gonna get hit with this for as long as they either consciously can or until something breaks, either their body, their spirit, you know, their skull. If you have any message you want to give to the Hamilton fans, someone that's, you know, they, they've taken you in there, you're absolutely 
huge around Hamilton. We've sold that venue out how many times and record breaking numbers every time. Um, and you know this because you walk around, we talked about it earlier, like, you know, like people are stopping you everywhere for photos and gyms and et cetera, et cetera. Any message you want to give to the Hamilton fans about this fight and the ramifications of the fight? I, I honestly, I love Hamilton. Um, they've adopted me as one of their own. And, you know, when I, when I fight here, it's just like, I want to keep giving them what I've, what I've given them. I want, to sh I want to show them what, you know, what prize fighting is all about, because I'm not, I'm not bad mouthing anybody, but I feel kind of bad for boxing fans because they've gotten not only Hamilton, but all around the world, they've gotten like, I don't know, almost let down with boxing because nobody's willing to die in there anymore. Nobody's willing to kill. Nobody's, nobody goes in there with that. It's like, you know, it's a business to them. How much money can I make? You know, how many likes can I get on a post? Like, forget all that. I'll let the Hamilton fans know right now, every single time I step through the ropes, since the beginning and until the end, you're gonna see the most violent fighter in boxing today.